the New York Giants safety, a person by the name of Julian Love. I don't know if you know who that is. Uh, We didn't know who he was until not that long ago. But Julian Love of the Giants was working on his inner blabber mouth ninja skills, which we approve of. We're not against that. Uh, And he was commenting on Nick Sirianni the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, if you didn't hear this, we're going to play it for you in a sec here. Perhaps you missed it, but it was during an appearance on something called Good Morning Football, which uh, is part of the Prob the News at the NFL Network, a little uh, nonsense, uh, fun and giggles on the NFL. Now, Julian Love, very loose lips here, and uh, the Giants, of course, long gone from the NFL postseason, but they were talking about the matchup, the Eagles and the Chiefs and the Super Bowl, and Nick Sirianni and some of his uh, sideline shenanigans as the Eagles are now in the Super Bowl as they took out the Giants earlier, took out the 49ers, and now they're going to try to take out the Chiefs. So what exactly did this cat Julian Love say? So as Warner Wolf would say, Let's go to the audio tape. You know, he's a guy who really is doing a good job because he's not getting his in the way of his team. He has an experienced roster uh, from top to bottom, offense, defense. You see this stuff, though? Like, like what's your reaction as a player? And that guy's doing that. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it at all. I mean, he's, he's in for a free ride right now. You guys can coach this team and they can succeed. <laughs> all right, so that, see that last part. That's the money quote. They're all like, He's in for a free ride right now. You guys can coach this team. Ah, and everyone laughs. All right, so let us discuss. <laughs> the, the question, the giant safety, Julian Love, saying that the Eagles coach is getting a free ride. Anybody can coach that team. That's essentially what he said. You heard it for yourself. Are you in or out on that statement? So I am in on that statement. I am in on that statement. Uh, app. Absolutely, uh, absolutely in on that particular statement. Uh, I've got metamorphosis. We've got that, the 80-20. And if that was not enough for you, we also have the exam heard round the world. So we'll combine all of these things together, and that will be the foundation of this Maller monologue. So, A, we'll start with this. Nick Sirianni, who, even if you like the guy, and you're carrying the water for him, is benefiting from the fruits of the labor of the players. It's kind of how that works, right? Coaching is important, but talent is essential. Now, the uneducated fan will say, hey, wait a minute, timeout, timeout, timeout. The Eagles only added one offensive player going into this year. So how big a difference? It's the same team, essentially. No, 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 no. That one new player, the puzzle piece that completed the puzzle, A.J. Brown. So what can Brown do for you? His mere presence has unlocked the hidden world of Jalen Hurts. Hurts has undergone a metamorphosis from imperfect. He's not perfect, but he's above average. He certainly didn't play well in the last game against the 49ers. You wouldn't know that by the final score. But Philadelphia has been able to dominate in the trenches. And the offensive and defensive lines have controlled much of these games here. And uh, there's other things involved in the secret sauce. But adding that receiver from the Tennessee Titans, who occasionally doesn't even catch passes. He's He's a decoy. But that has pushed Philadelphia into a chance to win a Lombardi in less than two weeks in Arizona. Now, part B of this. Uh, Let's go back to Sirianni. So Sirianni taking some criticism. There's also a lot of people running to defend him, including some of the guys in the Eagles locker room. I know you were shocked by that. That, This is, of course, standard chow here. They were rushing to push back. How dare you? What's wrong with you? Shame on you. You can't say that about my coach. Kind of what you have to say. If you don't say that, that becomes problematic. You do what you got to do. Now, the most verbose that we could find from the Eagles, a linebacker by the name of Brandon Graham. And what did Brandon Graham say? Well, he had a long rant about his coach. And let's give you a little taste. Let's go to the audio tape. Here's the Eagle linebacker, Brandon Graham, 
defending his coach. Only I just know that Coach Sirianni is. Uh, it don't matter what he did last year with a team that you know no Sirianni is. Uh, that's too much on it. I just know that Coach Sirianni is uh, – it don't matter what he did last year and with a team that, you know, nobody thought was going to do much. You know, he ended up getting us to the playoffs. And then for his second year, it's, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get better. You're supposed to bring players in to get uh, – to do exactly what you need them to do. And we did that. I mean, he say anybody can coach the uh, this team. It's like, man, it don't matter uh, because at the end of the day, it's on your GM and your president and pe uh, people to be able to bring guys in and sign guys and have people want to come to this organization. So, I mean, man, it's a whole bunch of different factors other than just him talking about Coach Sirianni. Uh, it's just, you know, a lot of people just mad because of what happened this season. I understand. But, yeah, it, I mean, it definitely carried no weight because, I mean, Coach prove itself each and every day. And uh, if you're not in here, you really wouldn't know that. So it's just all lip service. Ah, it's just lip service. Well, that was a long soliloquy. So how do you dissect Brandon Graham's argument in defense of his coach? So uh, it made for a better headline than reality. You heard it. Were you blown away by that? I know in the blogosphere that read as Eagle linebacker Brandon Graham passionately defends the honor of his coach. And for those that have the attention span of a goldfish, that works, but studies have confirmed over the years that most people don't actually read the, the story. They instead just read the headline. In fact, it's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of people react to the headline, and only 20% of people will actually scroll through the actual story. And I think the number is about 60% of people will, will share something like send a text or something uh, on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever, Instagram, TikTok, but they'll send a link that they didn't even click on just because they liked the headline. But on this one, Brandon Graham is serving up a soup, the soup of the day, and that would be alphabet soup. A bunch of uh, words, uh, letters made into words. It sounds powerful. However, when you actually parse what was said here, Graham did not exactly disagree with Julian Love. That's the part that I, I kept waiting for the big disagreement. He didn't actually address specifically what Julian Love had said. In fact, he essentially endorsed it by saying the GM of the Eagles and the president brought in elite talent. Uh, and he also, at the end there, he gave the boilerplate answer. If you're not in here, you don't know. That's always the default position by the jock, by the meathead. Uh, that's what they go with. Now, the last word here, has Nick Sirianni, established himself as a top-tier coach in only a couple years on the job? So the answer is no. The report card is incomplete. There's an I for incomplete. It is a small sample size, but he's using a ballpoint pen and a notepad to write the story, but he's not done with it, and it's still early on. And we've seen coaches get off to good starts and then vanish away. But so far, Fortune has been on his side. Uh, th there's been some some good scheduling outside of the division, the NFC East. The Eagles played two playoff teams outside of the divisional opponents, the Vikings and the Jags. So they didn't have exactly a murderer's row. And Nick Sirianni's claim up until this season, his claim to fame was the exam, the draft exam. You remember Sirianni's the guy. This was a year ago or a year and a half ago. When Sirianni said how they would determine what players they wanted to draft, they were playing rock, paper, scissors with prospective players in the draft prospects, and they were trash-talking the guys. He was trash-talking the players to gauge how competitive they were. Apparently that works. We should all be playing rock, paper, scissors. Uh, he, the, the thing that is really rubbing like sandpaper on many is Sirianni's very arrogant, cocky demeanor on the sidelines and his gyrations are not the norm. And it, it, it annoys a lot of people. They get very upset by that. And my theory is that's where a lot of this is coming from. But we'll find out. There's one more massive game. And the, the difference here, we all know if you win the Super Bowl, you're oh, all time. Great. Wee. If you lose, eh, you're forgotten. And he's like, well, you, you got to a Super Bowl, but you didn't win. There's a lot of teams that got to a Super Bowl, didn't win. And uh, you kind of brush them off. 
You brush them off to the side. You're like, okay, that's it. You go over there. All right, it is the Ben Maller 